For the last 11 years, I've worked for Episcopal Health Services at St. John's Episcopal Hospital. St. John's Episcopal Hospital serves the second largest Medicaid and Medicare population of any hospital in New York. Interesting fact, the hospital that serves the largest Medicaid and Medicare population is Interfaith Medical Center. We'll recognize that name because that hospital used to be managed by the Diocese of Long Island. So here we have these two mission-driven institutions, in particular the one that I serve, a mission-driven faith-based institution serving Medicaid and Medicare populations. 80% of our patients, 70% of that 80% sur suffer from psychiatric comorbidities. To unpack that, that means they have mental illness or cognitive impairments as a result of aging or a lifetime of mental illness or drug abuse and alcohol abuse. These patients are black, Hispanic, from a variety of countries, as well as born in the U.S. And our next largest population after those is actually Russian speaking. They are poor, they are female, they are elderly. And every day, 365 days a year, we are welcoming them into our emergency room as admitted patients and into our clinics. We provide for them health care. In our country, we've got a little challenge. We don't consider health care a right. We consider it to be something people earn or some kind of privilege. And we deny the full humanity of people by saying they have to earn the right to stay well. Jesus spoke to us in the Gospels about denial. Remember the story about Peter denying Jesus three times on the eve before his crucifixion? Well, after the resurrection of Christ, Jesus had a conversation with people, Peter about these denials. Jesus asked him, do you love me? Peter was thunderstruck by the question, and he said, yes, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus then said to him, Peter, tend my sheep, feed my lambs. At St. John's, by providing health care to everyone, whether they have insurance or don't have insurance, we are tending the sheep. We know well in the Diocese of Long Island, Jesus is called to love him. And this loving is justice making. As individuals, as congregations, as a diocese, we are called to make justice, to understand that health care, housing, food, are not things that people earn, but their basic human rights. I'll tell you a little story from St. John's about how we live into this justice making. A few years ago, a patient came in an ambulance. That patient was unconscious and sadly never regained consciousness. Escorting that patient in the ambulance was an adult, adult with a, de a developmental disability who was not able to say more than his name. During the two weeks that it took our social work, care management staff, in partnership with the police to find other relatives, the staff at St. John's housed, fed, did the laundry for this developmentally challenged adult. Do you know that in New York State, a child who has no one to care for them has a right to emergency housing through the foster care system, but there's no comparable right made available for adults who have no ability to take care of themselves. Socially, politically, theologically, there are so many ways in which we do injustice. Racism, sexism, classism, gender identity issues, sexual identity issues. Christ calls us not to deny anyone's humanity, but to understand that in order to love him and be faithful to that loving, we have to care for his lambs, providing for them health care. Here's what I think we are called to do in the Diocese of Long Island. We need to stop being afraid of our churches closing because there are too few members. We need to stop being afraid of the people who are different from us, who are now moving into the communities around our churches. And this is true whether we're talking about urban Episcopal churches like St. George's, where I'm standing today, with its burgeoning Korean community around it, or we're talking about St. Margaret's in Plainview with people from Central Asia, from India, who are in increasing numbers buying houses in that very affluent community. 
If our congregations are about tending Christ's sheep, loving and serving those who are around us, people will come to us and our pews will get filled. And frankly, even if the pews don't get filled, we'll be so busy helping, the resources that come from that helping will allow us to stay together as a congregation. We need to release some of our fears. We need to move out of our comfort zone that the people we worship with have to sing like us, look like us, pray like us, kneel when we do, stand when we do, and be more focused on loving one another and loving those who have no one to love them.